Hey, what we got going on today? You know, we've been we're doing another hero workout, and uh, we we've, we've done this before, and so I know everybody's been real anxious. I've been getting a lot of questions about what the workout is and what we're doing, and you've heard me talk a lot about being on the strict timeline today. With these with these hero workouts, you remember the goal for today is to honor the person uh, through our work, through our effort in the workout, honor the person through the work, um, and and give them. Um, I guess the respect they deserve through our hard work and our effort. Kyle Carpenter was given the Congressional Medal of Honor. It's the highest honor a military service man can receive. It's pre presented by the President of the United States. And I would love so much to be able to stand here and tell this story for the next hour, but I thought it would be much cooler if it actually came from him. So today you guys, Kyle, you come on you guys are saying hi. Uh, All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm, uh, a lot of people uh, sacrificed a lot for us to live here freely. My squad leader, Corporal Stinson, Zach Stinson, he led from the front. And what's significant about that is squad leaders are not supposed to walk in the front of a patrol. Obviously, the one in the front is most likely to step on an IED, which is a bomb planted in the ground, or um, is more likely to um, you know, get shot by enemy snipers, uh, by any attacks that are initiated. So the front is a very dangerous spot. Well, he walked there knowing the risk and, you know, I asked him about it uh, while we were over there. We were sitting around one day after a patrol, kind of just decompressing. And I asked him, I said, you know, Stinson, why do you walk in the front? And uh, he said, because if, if something, I would rather something happen to me than any of the Marines under me. So, you know, that was, that was talking about leadership. A lot of people can talk about leadership. Well. Uh, the time after that, I, as we were headed out on this patrol, headed towards Eastern Village, uh, Corporal Stinson, as always, was walking in the front. And uh, I was about four Marines behind him. And we were about halfway to the Eastern Village and a, lot, a very loud explosion went off. Dust was all in the air, it was a total fog of war, debris was raining down, and this was a very good sized explosion. Uh, Tessa. Corporal Stinson's wife was pregnant at the time with their daughter, Olivia, and uh, he definitely gave us his last, I guess, I get last talk, last speech, last request. He didn't think he was gonna make it. We didn't either. Obviously, we tried to keep his confidence up and tried to talk down his injuries and, uh, and give him that hope, but uh, as Marines, we kinda know what we're getting into, and. Uh, we do a lot of training as far as injuries go, and it's easy to look at major injuries and uh, be realistic and know that there's a good chance that he knew and we knew that he was not going to wake up and uh, survive to see his daughter born. So he told us his last request, and uh, he was alive, very shallow breathing when we put him on the medevac helicopter, which finally arrived after, I'm sure it was just a few minutes, but it seemed like hours. Uh, as far as Corporal Stinson goes, we spent the next little over two years together in the hospital recovering together. Uh, I became best friends with him and his family. His daughter, Livy, was born and she's out of control and they're, they're due for another one uh, in the next few months. So he survived. He's a double amputee. He lost both of his legs and both arms he has left uh, were severely damaged. But, uh, like I said, you know, he told me why he walked in front before. And then his actions occurred. And uh, it obviously summed up and put everything into action that he had spoken about and the leadership that uh, he had showed us before that happened. So I don't know how much I have to hit on it. I hope just that simple story shows you just a true example of sacrifice and leadership, somebody that stepped up and went in front even though it was going to be hard, even though he could possibly get injured, and in this case, even though it almost very much cost him his life. 
So uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of hardship, a lot of heartache, and a lot of really dark places around the world, but uh, we're very fortunate and blessed in this country to have what we have. So I would just really say be appreciative for the, the small and simple things we have. At the end of the day, those are, those are really incredible things that a lot of hard work and a, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears over, since the founding of our nation has happened for that. This is the most cliche thing ever, but it really isn't always about winning. There's, you know, when you're always focused on winning or, or getting that medal or whatever it is, that's awesome, but uh, you're gonna realize a lot of the things, uh, you know, that, that came second to, to the medal and to the first place and to, to being the absolute best you can be now is the, the simple things that you learned and the relationships you formed and just the good times and, and the education you got from it. So, uh, you know, like I said, I wish I could stand up here and, and tell you everything that I could possibly remember and any lesson that I ever learned, but appreciate where you live and the, and the country you live in and, and everything it took to get here. The workout, the workout that we're doing in honor of Corporal Kyle Carpenter, we're gonna go three 200 swims in the pool. After each 200, uh, the athlete has to hop out and they have 20 burpees on the end of the deck. After the third 200 finishes, they're gonna put on running shoes. They're gonna do a one lap run, all right, around our backfield back here. And then on the far end of the field, uh, we have a pull-up bars back there. So we'll go, guys will have five pull-ups, the girls will have three. And then once they run the rest of the circle around the lap, they'll have 20 kettlebell swings or kettlebells that are set up outside. They run back inside and we have two 200 swims here separated by 20 burpees. Go back outside, same lap again. Pull-ups at the far end, kettlebell swings uh, at this end. Come back in for a 200. At the end of the 200, you have 20 burpees running one lap. Then you have pull-ups on the far end, five and three and then kettlebell swings a total of 20. Then they'll come back inside and finish with one 100. And we're gonna take a total time here of all this and post that. And we'll, uh, we'll give out uh, some dog tags for, um, for the top performing female and the top performing male. So uh, it should take them, I'm hoping around 30 minutes or so to do this workout. Uh, it's meant to be a high intensity thing. And, and again, the thought process here is to uh, perform at our highest level um, and, and give our best effort in honor of the people that sacrifice on a daily basis for us to have the ability to do this. Thank you.